once again, Star Wars Unboxing Fans. Welcome to a special edition of Darth Tuba's Unboxing Show. I am your host, Darth Tuba, and today, well, where are we? Where are we at? Well, we're kind of in a in a bit of a house cleaning mode, I guess you could say. Um, for those who don't know, uh, my day job is teaching, and teachers do get a summer break. Uh, much of that summer break is used to prepare for the next year, to do some personal development, but we do get some time to kind of unwind and relax and take care of things around the house that never got taken care of for the rest of the year. So um, one of the things that a lot of teachers like to do is spring cleaning, which happens in the summer, and uh, just to kind of do a little bit of straightening around the house. Well, that's something that, you know, I, like any, like any other teacher, will try to take advantage of from time to time. But for a Star Wars collector, that is a prime time where you have a little bit of time during the day, uninterrupted, that you can take a look at your collection and decide, are you good with it? Is there anything you want to look through? Change? Move around? Redisplay? Clean? Remove? Purge? Yes, even collectors like to purge. Even, even us collectors have a, have a desire from time to time to say, you know what? This was great. I loved having this, but I'm ready to part with it. Maybe to make room for something else. Maybe to sell and put some money back into the collection in another way. So there's all sorts of ways that you can do that. So we're just going to kind of do a little look-see around the main part of the collection and uh, kind of decide some things that we want to do. So let's take a look. Okay, so viewers who have seen the channel um, more recently will know that um, one of the things that we did down here was to... Uh, light up this nice display on the inside just so you have a better view of some of the collectibles that are on display it isn't ideal i mean there's of course um better ways to light it here and there but i think it's a much improved uh setup from previous um the front of what it looked like previously remember this is a light this used to be a light up display but it was a hard wired case that was the display so i didn't really have the uh electronics um knowledge to try to attempt that. Plus, we have no real outlets in that general vicinity, uh, so um, we decided to do something a little bit more um, simple, but I was really happy with it. But now when you look around, just to show you kind of where this is. Now, this is, yes, and some people have left comments that this probably isn't the most ideal setting for a Star Wars collection. It is, in fact, a boiler room, but it's a huge boiler room, okay? It's not a room, you know, it's not a room like a lot of people have like a closet that it looks like a closet, but then you open the door and there's the heater and there's the water water heater and that kind of stuff. My, my, my this, this is actually a very large room that houses all this. So I keep stuff away from the heater. Uh, some people said, well, doesn't that damage your collection? I said, well, from a, from a carded, boxed perspective, I would imagine that the dryness could do some, uh, do some damage, but I'm not one to be too concerned with that because most of my stuff is unboxed. And um, aside from a little dust that I have to just do some dusting, I haven't had any issues. It's been like this for, wow, 17 years. This space has been, um, you know, the, uh, the main hub of the collection. Um, I do have other rooms. I do have other areas if you've watched my channels and watched my shelf talks. But this is kind of where it all started. This was the room that the collection kind of, kind of was, was, was first um, displayed. And then it kind of grew out from there. So as you can see here, we got these, basically these are just uh, storage shelves picked up from, a, from Walmart or Lowe's that, um, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, flat bottom, no grating, so you can put stuff on them. Uh, they're in good shape. I mean, they work pretty well. They allow me to put a lot of stuff in there. Okay, but, you know, I've had some thoughts about, you know, do I want to keep them here? I think, I don't think this is something I'm going to work on this summer, but I think a long-term thing I would like to consider is uh, to take glass cases like this, but taller, like maybe like wall size glass cases, and maybe see if I can replace this entire setup with a glass case, all right? And then thereby having some more adjustable shelves, because you can see, you know, as collectors, we gotta take advantage of as much space as we have. And if you look here, I mean, there's a lot of empty space here and above here, like above the, uh, the Republic Cruiser there, okay? So, the other thing I want to do is kind of go through, and I've had, and I've done this a little bit. Like I, you might have seen episodes where I did an episode on this shelf and shelf talk, on this shelf, on the stuff above, okay. And I and I've done some, you know, some episodes where I've said, okay, now it's time to let's take a look at what we can do to, well, you know, when I when I turn the camera off, there are a few things that I say, you know what, I don't think I really want to have that anymore in the collection, and we kind of make some 
adjustments and take some things out. So who knows, you know, I'll have to take a look at things, but just to kind of give you a clue. There's also up here, we have where I sometimes keep a lot of figures on display in the cards, okay? Actually, I have found the spaces up here to be actually quite nice. I put some lights up in between the rafters so you can see them fairly well. They're not ideal. I mean, obviously, uh, just adjust this a little bit. There you go. I mean, obviously, the lighting isn't really designed for that, so it gets a little bit, you know, sometimes it's hit or miss. And the thing is that I'm limited with the amount of electronic power I have coming through here. If I put any more lights up, hence why it's dark here, if I put any more lights up, it ends up shorting out and everything, just the breakers, the breakers turn off and I have to go and reset them. So that's why I kind of leave that alone. So anyway, I've actually gotten through these and really pulled back a lot of the carded figures. I know it seems like there's a ton here, but believe it or not, I have actually probably dropped this down to, oh my God, I think this is about a quarter of what I've had. Now you can see back here on this other side here, there's some more up there. Here's where I put the latest and I don't, even, I don't even put the protectors in yet. Part of why that is, is that sometimes I actually take some openings, I'll take some of these figures and unbox them, some of the episode one figures and whatnot. I'll unbox them and then use the case, the star cases and replace them with the vintage collection, but we'll see. So those are all gonna kind of hang out. I'm not gonna worry about them. Let's kind of walk around here though. And again, I apologize for the darkness here. I if I can, let me see if I can give you a little more brightness here but and you can see I have another shelf right here okay uh, we also have this I'm kind of <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm kind of proud of this this is one of the this thing right here okay this is actually um, a man-made meaning I made uh, kind of a thing and here's how it worked they have these closets that you these closet inserts that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's that you can put inside of your closets I don't know if you've ever heard of California closets but um, they're all different things. You can get things with drawers in them, and you can get things with um, shelving, and you can do all sorts of cool stuff with that. Well, I decided to buy like one base unit, which is basically this, okay? It had the shelves on the inside, but I took out, I didn't use the shelves. I just went out and got some plexiglass, which you can get again at Home Depot. Generally, I think those are meant for like creating your own like storm doors or windows, but I cut them to fit. And then I just put them up as shelves. And then I just created one. And there, this was like a base, I, or literally a base unit that was meant to have another unit sitting on top of it. But I just kept the base unit. I put a, a piece of plexiglass on it, put some Velcro to keep it so I can lift it out. And then I was able to just go in and put it, put stuff in. Now, as you can see, though, there's a lot of, you know, I got some of the vintage glasses in there. There's some micro machines down at the bottom, but you can barely see everything. I mean, also in there are all of the, uh, you can't really see it from here, but all the, it's in there is all the um, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken um, mugs and cup toppers that they had. So uh, that is a unit I'm looking at and thinking, okay, I don't know how well that's going to work, how that is going to run. But, um, you know, especially when you see how well this is lit. I might get some lighting for that one, maybe do that. But it kind of goes back pretty deep. So I'm starting to think that maybe removing this and maybe getting rid of this shelf and replacing it with a wall glass shelf like I have in the other rooms might actually be a better fit for most of the product that's here. So we'll see. There's another one of those shelves. And you can see here we got a different type of shelf here. It's kind of a wooden base shelf. I really like these because um, they're almost floor to ceiling. There is a little tiny space on the bottom that a little drawer that you can, or a door that you can open up which is kind of nice because I, I didn't think I was gonna like that I would have rather had the I would have rather had the uh, storage the displayability factor but it's nice to be able to have a place to put a few maybe some boxes that you don't want to get rid of maybe there's a maybe this reason that you don't want to get rid of it you, you know you never know but it's a good place for storage of stuff of some things that are really undisplayable okay uh, I've picked these up there's three of them, actually four of them. One is in the other room. <coughs> Excuse me, dusty. I I, I ended up uh, finding them from a going out of business shelving place, which I, which it was a it was a knickknack shop. They had like you know a lot of Department Fifty Six and um, Yardro and Precious Moments that kind of thing. And I believe that these these shelving units were actually 
sold to them or given to them by a company that had a certain type of thing. Like it could have been precious moments. It could have been, you know, some kind of a collectible um, ceramic type of product. And I guess if you sold enough, they would send you these shelves and you can put the shelves up. You'll notice that they don't even have any real ceiling on them. They're just kind of, they're, they, they, they come apart. Like each wall comes off, the backing comes off, and the glass shelving comes off. So it works really well. It's very, it's very easy to transport and it's pretty versatile. So, and you can change the shelves. Obviously I had one here for the AT-ATs. So you can see what I did there. Um, so, you know, it, it, this is a kind of a nice setup. I mean, this one and this one, I'm, I'm really happy with this one is kind of mishmash. I have a, 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 a this is a uh, diorama of Ewok village that I put together, which I was really proud of. But and unfortunately, it's like, like most dioramas that are like man made, they start to come apart after a while. So some of the old collector series figures. OK, so I'm going to kind of go look through all this and see if there's anything here i mean for the most part i'm pretty happy with it there's not really anything here i'm willing to part with just yet i really like this one i wish i could do more like this this is my r2 3po kind of display or tribute wall you know a lot of r2 stuff a lot of 3po stuff you know kind of poking through all this i kind of enjoy that i wish i could do more of those but again i'm kind of limited by the space up here we have um the titaniums Okay, and, and that's like the one thing that I really kept as many of them in the package as possible. For one thing, the package isn't that bad, it isn't that big, and it kind of looks cool. And for another thing, is that I did take a lot of those out, and then it's just hard to display them loose. But we'll see. You know, right now they're not taking up any room up there. So I might, you know, this part of me was thinking I would take a shelf somewhere. There's some more up here. Take a shelf, making make up my own like custom shelving unit that I could display them, but that's a lot. That would take up a lot of space, so probably not. I think they'll keep, they'll they'll stick around for a while. Here, point this down over here. Let's point out uh, these are Ultrama, Ultrama or Ultrama, Ultrama. I think it's Ultrama display kits. Okay, they came. They actually came gray like this, and they came with their own backdrops. And then I actually had some fun and painted. Let's see if I can get this. To, I painted them. So you have this one down here, which is like Geonosis. Again, it's great. One problem, you can't see it, you know, because the bases are not, you know, clear. You really can't see these bottom ones. As you go up a little bit, there's the Death Star, okay? There's um, the two Jedi at the beginning of Episode One on the Trade Federation ship. There's another Geonosis. There's a uh, Ewoks, uh, the bunker. And this is the only one that really looks really good because it's up high. I had this whole shelf up at a higher level, but I moved it really temporarily. But I kind of like it here, except for the fact that you can't see it. So I'm not 100% sure. Plus, the problem with dioramas like this, these figures are all held together with like tacky bottom, you know, like the stuff you would tack posters on cement walls and stuff. And that stuff all starts to come loose. So it's hard to tell. Where I really want to look and what I really want to take a look at is what it looks like up here. See, this is the part of the house or the part of the area that's very more, you know, was never meant to be um, displaying stuff. These are deep shelves. Okay, you can see they go back about three feet deep. Okay, so obviously you can't see anything with them. I mean, you got a little bit of stuff. I got the uh, Clone Wars Y Wing, I got Oronto back there, and then a few things, some Pez, you know. But, but at the end, it's so hard to see everything. And there's things blocking things that are blocking things. So it's a real challenge as to what to do. Plus, I've got stuff down here that I'm looking at. And I'm thinking it's about time I part with. And most of it's not even really a collectible stuff. It's really just garbage. So things that I was not willing to part with. I think I have an old Vader costume back there. But it's really bad. It's not even a like an accurate Vader. It's not like that Vader costume. <laughs> so I think it's time to part with a few of these things. So I think I'm going to... Maybe take a look through and, and see what I can do. Um, some people were asking, you know, do you ever sell? Yeah, I do. I sell. I sell stuff. Um, I'm actually considering, normally I have a flea market. Or, or no, not a flea market, a garage sale. A yard sale. And um, I just like to 
you know, kind of go through and, and, you know, when things have, have been stored in the back long enough, and I'm like, why am I keeping that? You know, and I, I'm not really enjoying that. That's one of the reasons why I started unboxing. You know, I just, I thought the unboxing, <laughs> and my little battle droid here, poor guy. It's a cardboard battle droid, people. Cardboard. You know, you piece it together like making, like, punch out and make it. It was like a huge punch out and make it project. It was come out, DK Books came out with it 20 years ago, 21 years ago, when episode one came out. And I loved, the, I loved it. I mean, if you look at it, it actually held up together. I put, a, I built a little stand, okay? If I can get a little closer here. I basically just built using some scrap wood just so it could hold, because it could, you could hold it up. Um, it is just a cardboard piece. It won't stand on its own, but, you know, you can have it sit. You know, the, the, the joints were semi-posable, so it was, it was kind of fun. Um, they actually had four. I think they have sent us in a previous episode, but they made a battle droid, a pit droid, an R2-D2, and a destroyer droid, one of the droidicas. And I actually had three of the four. I didn't have R2, but I ended up with the pit droid, and I ended up with the droidica. The droidica was awesome, except it took up way, way, way too much room. And as a result, it just, it was just, uh, <laughs> I think I ended up leaving it in the house. Oh no, you know what I did? I had some students help me, my, oh, some students helped me move. And, and one of the kids was like eyeing it and thought it was so cool. So he had like, a, his parents had a finished basement. So I said, yeah, you can take it. So he left it there and then eventually he, uh, he ended up. Uh, getting rid of it because it's just cardboard, you know, it's like a very soft Pliable kind of a paper like a hard cardstock paper, but I love this guy. This guy stayed the picture right ended up going away I think the pickle picture got destroyed in a, in a flood um, But the battle droid survived and the destroyer droid did not so and I put this little hoodie on him to keep him warm when he gets cold here <laughs> All right, so there you know these this section is all the my old vintage I mean, this is the actual vintage, not the vintage collection. There's some droids, Ewoks. I've said this before. My my trick is, was, to find damage cards with price tags, things like that. Maybe damaged punch at the top there, like that one. They go for much cheaper. But when I say much cheaper, I don't mean, like, dirt cheap. They're just cheaper than mint on card. Uh, however, even damaged cards now are hard to find. And, and they're just, you know, they remember, they didn't make... As many as they make now, so and you can tell the difference. Like here's the the vintage collection that's more newer. I mean, I should say more newer. Even this is ten years old. Excuse me, Vader. Okay, so and then you got some stuff over here. That's my stereo, so I can play music. I I put some on right now, but then I'd get flagged, so I don't want to do that. But um, I started. I moved some stuff over here, and now I have a little helmet, um, little helmet display, mask display, which I liked. I stopped collecting masks because the masks are made of latex and the latex is a cheap latex and the latex eventually breaks down and all my masks have been destroyed. So no more masks, but helmets, helmets, helmets hold up pretty well. So, you know, we got some stuff here. These are all those, uh, those glasses that came with, um, ooh, this one, I gotta lower the thing. Sorry about that. These are all the glasses that came with, um, Target or I think it was all Target. They came with figures. You can look, I even put, when I unboxed them, I put the figures on the inside of the glass. And they stack, which is kind of nice. This was just kind of a mishmash collection. If you look closely, you can see that it's uh, it's basically just a little bit of everything. You know, just all the oddball stuff. Look at the, the, R2, the R2 soap dispenser, Vader bubble bath, some Ahsoka and Anakin Pez dispensers, a BB-8 toothbrush. I mean, I just am fascinated by all the product that's come out. That box there... If you can see it, like some of those yellow figures with the yellow bases are standing on. That's actually a Darth Vader chocolate mold for Easter. Now, obviously, I did not keep the chocolate. I, I, I ate it, and honestly, it wasn't that good. <laughs> but, uh, of course, we have down here, we have our Jedi Council that decides to watch one of the um, Wabi and Death Gang getting eaten by a Rathtar. <laughs> you don't remember that in the movie? So, but here you got a lot of popcorn buckets, things like that. Those are things that are probably going to end up getting um, put, a, put in a cell pile. Because, you know what, folks? There just comes a point where you're never going to be a completist. So, you, you collect what you enjoy collecting, and then when it's no more enjoy it, when it's more work to keep it than it is to, you know, like, for my first step is, you know, if it's a boxed item, I'll unbox it. And if 
unless it's something that's like extremely valuable and you know in which case you know, I might consider a trade or something of that nature but all right and you can see here some more shelves so once I you know I walked in I started this video talking about okay I'm gonna do a plan I'm gonna set up a plan but I think right now um, and I also have learned is that the best thing that you can do as a collector is do small projects I mean unless you're somebody who has a lot of time on your hands and even though you know we are as a teacher where we have a summer break um, this is not like, you know, it's not like we don't do anything. We have to prep for school. We have, you know, I'm a marching band director. There's band camp. There's prepping for band camp. And there's a lot of things that go on. So I don't have an unending amount of time. So you got to pick small projects. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of go through up here and just kind of go through the stuff that's here and see if I can maybe consolidate some of it, redisplay some of it. You know what it is? Some of these, it's hard to make out, but some of these are actually um, the the some of the boxes were displays, which were great, wonderful, awesome idea. Not sure it's actually, uh, you know, I'll keep them for a while, but not sure how feasible it is to keep them forever. So we'll see. And we got in here. We got our weapons. Ah, easy. We got our, this is our weapons closet here, which is nice. And it contains a couple of um, cool uh, vintage, some Prop replica, 3D printed. This is where all of my Lego boxes are. You know, which I'm also looking at maybe considering um, purging. Not the Legos themselves, but the Lego boxes. And because I imagine that, although it is nice to have the instructions, but there is part of me that thinks, you know what? I'm never gonna get rid of those. And if I do get rid of them, I'll just sell them right outright. I'll keep the you know, if I if I just pull all the instruction booklets out. So if anybody wants boxes, let me know. <laughs> Maybe if anyone just wants the boxes, I might work on that. Some posters, some boxes down here, some things that have been broken down. All those poster tubes. Man, that's a shame. I mean, I have all these posters, but I have no room. I have no room to put up posters. So that's a that's a that's a really 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 hard part about collecting is that, you know, you, every collector is limited to the number of space, the amount of space. And in my case, I don't have any wall space. You know, if you've seen in my previous episodes, you know that my daughter's an artist, and that's a that's a challenge. So I'm going to move into another room here. Kind of like I guess we'll call this a collection update. Um, this is where my this is my studio. This is where I, you know, sit. Here's my desk. This is kind of where I set the camera up for our unboxing shows. You can see I don't have all the lighting on right now, but you can see here all of the uh, boxes. Many of them are newer stuff. Like there's a Tie Fighter. There's the X-Wing, Pose X-Wing, but the rest of them are pretty much old. Oh, there's the Mandalorian. There's that Mandalorian uh, box. I, I, I just love the old school boxing. And the rest of them are old. You know, they're my boxes that I kept. And yeah, you know, I don't want to get rid of the boxes. All right. So, you know, but that's only from a vintage side. Everything else I do, you know, I do. I got a little, got a call in and it kind of messed up my phone. So there you go there. Okay, we got my little photo unit. And my Jabba's Katana box, which serves as a very nice stand. <laughs> so there you go. Let's get some light in here. I keep things dark just because. You can see that now here's, here's a space where we have some displays. Hello. Okay, this is again another display, Hummel, from that store that went out of business. It's where I keep a lot of my Legos, along with this really cool... Um, X-Wing display diorama. So, but again, you know, this is why I stopped collecting Legos. Because there just isn't enough room for any more Legos. I do occasionally pick some up, but this is a sideshow diorama display. There are all my old 12-inch figures, along with the Yoda 8-Ball. Here's some of the uh, black or no, not black series. Pardon me, uh, elite series from Disney. And again, this is great. And I love these 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 units, these display cases. Sixty dollars, IKEA. And honestly, it's been like twenty years, and they're still sixty dollars. They have not really gone up in price. So they're awesome. You can buy them apart. Ship, you know, so they're easy to pack in your car. They are very heavy because it's all glass, and you can put it together relatively simply. And then you have this nice display set but look at this like I have them here and it's awesome but look I got all this I got all this space above their heads I can have two levels 
So I gotta figure out ways that I can double the display. I did try this, I'll show you this, okay? Um, do I have any more light? No, I don't, okay. Here we have another set of, um, these are all Elite Series. There's a there's a, just a Vader in the back there. It's just one of the cheaper figures. But I built this little acrylic stand with four acrylic. These are rods that you were, I think they're meant, they're acrylic rods that you would put them in, believe it or not, cakes, like when you're making a tiered cake. But they're see-through acrylic and then a little piece of plexiglass. They're great. Guess what though? I hot glued them together. They were pretty sturdy, but eventually things give out. Now I will say the thicker the um, posts, those rods, the better off is that. This thing has lasted pretty long. So there's something that I'm gonna probably try to do, but I think I'm gonna try to do it a lot more in, you know, serious where I measure this so it's exactly the same you know, length and width of this so that it'll fit perfectly in there and I can you know, set it up so that maybe even the rods that are there can kind of help with it, help support it in some way. So there you go. Over here we have another one. You know, I buy these things and I'm like, oh, this will last me forever. But look, three figures. These are all um, Sideshow slash Hot Toys. Three more figures with a, you know, three figures. I have put a Lego in there. Three figures with another little piece. Four figures. And I got some on the bottom there. I got, you know, then I got a few more coming. I even utilize, this is an old roll top desk that we used to use. Pardon my Charlie Chaplin puppet in there. But I got Churrit. I got Luke, I got, I'll get both Lukes. Got that Vader kind of artsy thing. We got a 3PO and R2. And then believe me, if there is a shelf space, I use it. You know, because that's kind of where we are. Now, um, one thing I'm thinking about is this TV. I think this TV, my, I mean, I know it's a DVD and it's a VCR. And I stopped to think for a minute, like this is the only way I can watch a VCR tape. Not that I watch any VCR tapes. So this is probably, but then I look at the shelf. Oh my God, I could fit another thing on that shelf. Here we have the uh, buildable figures. They're pretty much all in one, one place now, which is I like. And now something else I'm looking to do is maybe try to get things placed in the same locale, you know? All right, so I've got my dehumidifier going, always important. Keep the dehumidifier going. Now this is what I'm talking about for the other room. I was in, in that same, knick-knack shop that went out of business and I was able to procure this wonderful shelf. I'll tell you folks, I think, and there's another one of those build apart, take apart wooden shelves. I'm telling you folks, that, that, the three other ones like that in the other room, and that Hummel case, I think I spent $400 for all of them, okay? Now, good luck trying to find that. That is not what you're going to come across. That is a very, very, very rare, very rare thing. To give you another thing, those two cases that I lit up in previous episodes, those like more counter cases, I think I paid 400 each for them. Or no, 500 for the two. So, but it wasn't nearly as, didn't even take up nearly as much space. I've been trying to find wall spaces like this online and I have found them, but they're roughly about $500 for just one. It's a little bit bigger than this, a little wider, but about the same height, and it's and you can light it. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking to maybe try to do, is get this out over there to replace the uh, white shelving, but we'll see. Okay. Actually, I'm very I'm very pleased with this room. This room, you know, we got my black series right over there. Got my nice little clock I made. Got all of our loose figures. This is where the loose figures come when I. <laughs> this is where they come. They, I have them all lined up, stacked here, right? All the way up to the end. I'll even put, use some spots here. I can go right down to the ground if I want. I'll probably give me a, give myself a good few inches. Two more of those Ikea shelves. And then I did this on a previous episode more, more recently. All of these black shelves that I finally, I got so tired of the mishmash of it, I tried to get them to have some assemblage of order. And this is so much nicer, you know? But we are limited to how much room there is. I mean, look at it. I mean, I got a little, the only reason that that's not, I have another shelf. And the only reason I didn't put the shelf up here, so I could have a little more, it's little Vader's lightsabers going up too high. 
So I, and then down here, there's the Millennium Falcon. I can probably get another shelf in there, which I'll probably do very soon. So there you go, folks. All right. After doing a, oh, there's my Star Trek, my little Star Trek tribute with, of course, Leia and Ray on there. My Elite Series collectible set. You know, you can see from previous stuff. Now, not everything. There's a family album library. So, you know, we keep those there for now. So you can see, guys, there's a lot to do here. There's my video game. Okay? You make do with the space you have. And that's all you can do. So as I said, I think my plan is to maybe just take a look at that that set of like deep shelves and kind of just go through all of that, take it all off the shelf, clean it, get everything kind of straightened up, see if there's anything in there we want to remove, throw away, put in a cell box, who knows. Uh, some people were asking me like, how do you do it? Do, what do we do? You know, what do you do for yard sales? You'd be surprised. Yard sales are a great way to find and sell Star Wars. But the couple things you got to be aware of. Number one, as a buyer, you better if if the if the if you're the kind of person that's looking up the sales on like a newspaper or on a website, and it says that the sale in this house or this house, a lot of them will say, as part of their advertisement, you know, huge yard sale, such and such address, tools, Lionel trains, baseball cards, Star Wars items. If if they say that, it's a possible bait and switch. So to be aware of that, it's a possible bait and switch, meaning they don't have Star Wars. They just say that because they know people come for that. But the other thing to be aware of is that if you want to take a chance and go, if they say it starts at 9, you better be there at 8, okay? Or And, and you go drive past it. If there's nothing there, drive past it at 8.15, 8.30, 8.45. I guarantee you they'll be setting up probably a few minutes before 9 at least, okay? And then ask right away. So do you have any Star Wars items? That's your, your ad said Star Wars and see what they have, okay? Number two, be realistic expectate with your expectations you're not going to find rarely are you going to see somebody with a whole set of carded action figures from 1977 and they're going to want to offer them to you for you know five bucks a piece no if you find that give me a call <laughs> no i you're not going to find that okay i think there's enough knowledge even from the from the non-star wars fan about how valuable the vintage items have become okay that they are either going to try to if they're if somebody does have carded action figures they're not going to sell them at a yard sale they're probably going to reach out to like an auction house or something or talk to an, a collector directly or go to a comic book store they're probably going to go in that format or call some place like brian's toys or places that buy buy figures and do it that way rather than try to set up a sale what you're most likely going to find are toys like from the 90s the 2000s even the 2010s okay and you know if that's what you want great probably going to be loose okay probably going to be incomplete but see what you can find you might Get, you might get something that you really want. Make some, you might find something that's really interesting to you, something that you like, something that you're passionate about. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, some people ask me about the the whole idea of um, you know what about you know what if you don't do a yard sale. See, yard sales are tough right now because you know every state's different about what you sh what you should and shouldn't do. And some school places are very very rigid about the rules about you know getting a permit and everything else. So you have to check with your local. Um, you know, governing ordinances and stuff, and just to make sure that you're doing all the right things. But um, also, if you, you know, where's your location? If you're putting out a yard sale and it's like in the back street somewhere, and you don't, you know, put up, invest in the signs and invest in advertising. Okay. Yes, it's true. If you have a lot, if you have one table, don't bother with a yard sale. Okay. Unless you're doing like a, like a neighborhood yard sale. Okay. Then get in with one of that. But if you have like a real garage full of stuff, and believe me. Every few years, I accumulate, or just there's things that I just go through in the house and say, you know what, I haven't used this in 10 years, I haven't used this in five years, I'm putting it out in the, in the cell pile. So at the end of the, you know, after a year or two, I actually end up with a, about 10 tables worth of stuff that I could sell. So I advertise. I put it in the two local papers that'll go to like all the circulars. Um, it usually ends up costing me by about $125 for the two. And then I also put up big signs, not little tiny signs. I, I buy huge poster board or, or not even poster board like foam board and then i go to a bunch of telephone poles and i just put yard sale friday saturday whatever and then i nail it to it with the arrows pointing in the right direction usually a mile away from either either direction of the street and then arrows pointing in the street at the cross section and even like 
you know, uh, if it's, if you know, even like kind of you're almost there signs, you know, just to get people really clear on it because you do get, an, you do get traffic from that, okay? I guess this has become a yard sale 101, like, 101 uh, class. You never knew what, what, what videos you're going to be watching. But um, another option, okay, for buying and selling is check local flea markets. Check out local places because there are places like here, there are places that are starting to open up now. They're doing their social distancing. They're, you know, separating tables. But you go there for, you, you go there for a couple of hours. You fill up your car. You have to pay like 20 bucks or 30 bucks or 40 bucks to get a table. And then you set it up and you put it up, get your prices, put your prices on there with little, you know, post-it notes or something. So everybody knows how much things are, okay? And then you line everything up and then you can sell everything there. And if you have, if, if you have a theme, like it's all Star Wars or all sci-fi, you'd be surprised. There might be another collector or another business that will want to come over and say, I'll give you 300 for everything you got here. And if I were you, I would just take the deal. Unless you're really, really hoping to make... If you're hoping to make a huge amount of profit, then you're better off again going to collectors privately. But if you're selling it at a flea market, you're you know unless you're making a business out of being a flea market salesperson, you really just want to sell it enough to, you know, get it get the stuff out of your house and make a little bit of money while you're doing it. That's what you're aiming for. So um, as a buyer, uh, it's check out your local flea markets because you'd be surprised. And every not only every day, but different parts of the day you could walk through one guy's one guy's uh table and see you know, nothing of interest and then circle the whole thing come back again and apparently he just went around and bought somebody else's stuff that you didn't see and now that's something that interests you okay um and and you know obviously right, right now you know comic book comic cons and things of that nature are also great great resources but let's face it i don't think you're going to be having any of those anytime soon so Flea mar outdoor flea markets are probably your next bet, especially for the summer, okay? But yeah, take a look. Walk around. Check it out. You might find stuff. You might find things that are really cool. But again, like the yard sales, go early, okay? A lot of these places, I know we have one locally that is, I think the hours are 6 to 4. Now, I showed up at 11 one, day, one, one time. Well, I showed up at 11, and I saw no less than 10 salespeople like with their flea markets packing everything up. They got there at like 5.30 in the morning. For a six o'clock opening and then they did all their business like six seven eight o'clock so by the time i showed up at 11 there was nothing of interest there for me to get but maybe maybe there wasn't earlier but you'll never know so uh, early bird early bird finds the cool star wars toys so all right so uh anyway so i think my plan is here to start putting some stuff in a cell box see what we can see what we can do and again that's not it's not a business of mine i don't buy and sell i'm not a scalper i don't do anything of that nature i just I buy some stuff that I like, I keep it on the, I keep it on display, and after a while I say, you know what, I think I'm ready to part with that. Somewhat, some, some of it just to make room, some of it just because, you know, I just it, it doesn't resonate with me as much as it used to. Nothing wrong with that, okay? Don't don't be afraid of that. So that'll be it for this interesting episode, and wasn't quite sure where it was going to go. Um, so I thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Thank you to our new subscribers. Check out all my videos, guys. Look back on the playlists. You know, look at all the different things. There's something for everybody. If you're a Star Wars fan, there's something for everybody. We unbox all sorts of stuff here. Um, I am hoping that an upcoming episode will find us in Walt Disney World. Yes, I have a planned trip. Yes, I am being safe. This is not primarily a trip to go down to Florida. It's a trip to visit our daughter, who's been down there, kind of uh, quarantined like we have been, and we want to spend some time with her. But there's a chance that we might try to get into uh, the, the Disney parks in a socially distant and safe, wearing our masks um, way, where we can just walk around Galaxy's Edge again and see what that's like. Um, I feel bad for Disney because this would have been the summer of Galaxy's Edge, and it's not going to be that, sadly. Um, so I want to get in there and, but I want to see what it's like with minimal crowds too. That would be interesting. And, uh, get on Rise of the Resistance one more time. Again, if there's a safe way to do it, if not, I'm perfectly happy to walk, walk from a distance away from any crowds and just enjoy being in Galaxy's Edge and maybe get a blue milk, um, you know, for my time and that'll be that. But I hope to pick up a few more items and be able to show them on the show. I, I have not yet built my own droid, so I'm hoping to do that. So we will, um, we've done one of those, but we'll do another one. And uh, probably not a Sabre this year. I don't think I'm ready for 
um, a second saber. I got my first saber. It's right over here. And I love it. It's awesome. So um, we'll see what happens. But, you know, everything's fluid. Always, all, always in motion is the future, as Yoda would say. So we shall see. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. Check out all my other videos. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button, all that other jazz. Talk to you soon. And until next time, may the Force be with you. Hey, Star Wars fans. Hope you didn't stop the video too soon because I decided to put a little epilogue on this and add kind of an update. So I got, I got energized and decided to do a little bit of straightening. Okay? And uh, if you watched the previous episode you, or the previous video earlier, you'll see that to the right of these uh, vintage figures, we had a whole bunch of mishmash here, a bunch of boxes down here, and then over here we had some stuff in the shelves and then some more boxes and more boxes still, a lot of plush and cases on the floor and things of that nature. So what I have done is I have kind of purged a lot of stuff. I put a lot of stuff in the cell box. A lot of things was really just trash. And, uh, and I just decided to, you know, consolidate things like that. So now the one thing that this doesn't have right now is good lighting. So I'm going to work on some, uh, lighting ideas for, um, maybe some future episodes. I still have some of those LED strip lights that I think might work. Like if I align the, uh, the top here, um, and just kind of run them into the nearest outlet, I think we have an opportunity for some really cool lighting. So maybe we'll put an episode together with that. But up top here... You see, I got a Ronto. I got this is the Rancor from um, Disney World. It's like kind of a latex Rancor. I got a couple of creatures and some vehicles in the back there. What I did was I consolidated a lot of Lego boxes, broke them down, and flattened them, and put them all to kind of in the bigger Lego boxes. We still have our racetrack there. I keep that where it is. Okay, I have a do back again from Disney. Then we have some vehicles. Just a few in the front, a few in the back. Nothing too crazy. And down here, some more vehicles, some smaller ones up front. Okay, and look, every collector's dream shelf space. Yay! Okay, now every collector has a box of stuff. All right, what do I mean, what do I mean by stuff? Well, every time I open up an action figure that has a, that has a um, dice in it or a stand that I don't want to use, the Comtech chips from the episode one days, I can just kind of throw them in one box. That box is almost filled to the top. With stuff. Maybe one day I'll just kind of go through the box and see if any of you can relate. So you can see here, lots of space. This looks fairly similar. Okay, we um we did keep my little Pepsi inflatable Qui Gon there. I also had a Pepsi inflatable uh, Jar Jar, or not Pepsi, but Mountain Dew. But I've decided to put that on the cell pile. No, I'm not a Jar Jar hater. I love Jar Jar. Jar Jar is awesome. I just needed to part with a few things. There's an R two D two toy box in the back there. I actually wanted to get that up off the ground because, you know, in the unlikely but possible event of flooding, I want to keep a few things up a few inches. Here's my awesome R2 cooler that you could usually saw in uh, around the time of um, the special edition, I think. Uh, you could uh, get sodas kind of in their convenience stores. And inside there is where I keep a lot of my plush, my Disney plush, and I can rotate them out. This is the Frito-Lay Ewok. It looks like just a big stuffed teddy bear because when I picked, purchased it, it did not have his hood. So one of these days, I need to get a hood together and uh, give that to him. Of course, he has a Yoda backpack on his back. And then we have some Luke X-Wings and the Vader model. Some stuff up there. Here's where I got to put the, um, the really cool uh, Episode 1 Banks. There's some collector cases in the back. A few other things. But look at all this space. Nothing on the ground. It just looks awesome. All right, and, la and last but not least, actually. Okay, on. forget my glistening sweat here, but this is my favorite. This is the thing I cannot wait to share with you right now. Now, I've shown this in previous episodes. This is my arsenal, lightsabers and things of that nature. But what I want to show you is the inside of it. Look at that. Empty. Well, not empty, but, I mean, look at it. It's just... Got you, this thing was filled with everything. I mean, I, I will say, I made some decisions. One decision was posters. I made a decision to sell my posters. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I had literally dozens of rolled up posters or tubes that I brought posters with. And they're all fantastic. They're great. But I just don't have the wall space. If I have a wall, I'm putting a shelf up on that wall. More often than, more, more likely than putting up a poster. So the poster's gone. I have a couple of posters in those tubes there, right? Those are movie posters that are like, um, 
They're the ones that are kind of, uh, you actually can put them up with lighted marquees so you can light from the back. Uh, I kept those because those are really cool. And I do have um, a desire one day to get a marquee poster to put upstairs and then maybe rotate out the um, posters as we come. Not just Dark Star Wars, but I have a few Disney posters and whatnot. And then up there, we have all the lightsaber boxes. With plenty of room for other stuff. So I'm really excited. I wanted to share it with everyone because it's nothing like getting, you know, even collectors want to get organized. Even collectors, toy collectors want to get it organized and set up in a way that is easier to, to find everything, to consolidate and put it all in one kind of area. So I'm excited about that. Real happy that that happened. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know this was kind of a ran random hodgepodge video, but that's kind of what I do. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Until next time, may the force be with you.